So it sounds like we can do the presentation and then we can do the work sessions, the table. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to just end this. I think we may have to keep talking. Yeah. When do you want to cut off that signal? Just like uh, after Gail's presentation, she's going to do a, an overview of the sanctuary. And then um, start to go to the sanctuary at our table. Yeah. And that's when that's next week. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to say hello. Hey. How was your first time? It was fantastic. Yeah. Okay, you got me here. It's really good to be back in town now for a little while. So. Oh, uh, yeah, I already to be Oh, yeah, it's it's just so different. And I feel like that was what I was craving. I was like, I need to try something new. Um, and I mean, I'm sitting down there, I don't really get to do that here. So, uh, so the two people vote. We have all the temperatures. Oh, there's, there's, a, there's a lake down there. Yeah, it's not a very good lake. The water is like, yeah, but you can jump to it. We make it work, but then we get to travel to California like once a month or so and, and do competitions down there. So, it's, it's a really good thing. There actually there should be a, a lot of the things with me. Uh, yeah, somehow I'm the treasurer of the club now. So well, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm really excited to continue doing that. And see everybody again. So next year we finally kind of get to get down into the actual computer science because I had like some general stuff. Okay, good. Very exciting. Yeah, thank you. But I do think that like going away kind of reinvigorated my love for the town because I was like, I don't know, I came back and I still am finding things. You know. Just, like, like, yeah. But I think it's so important to see. Like, yeah. I'm not putting up there down, but I yeah. feel bad for no, the kids who just go with her. Yeah. There, there's benefits, but there's also a lot of things. So. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very glad I made this. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you can sit down. So there's two things. <laughs> There's two on every tape. Yeah, but there is. Oh, I will come. I will. Let me run up and. Okay, let me run up. Thank <laughs> you. 
And then also, this is the first time that we'll get some um, interaction with our liturgical design consultant and our sanctuary team. So uh, we'll start off with just a little overview here um, and a song. And then um, we'll go into the architect's report from the building team, have a little bit of question and answer from the uh, with you and the architect. And then um, we'll have about an hour and 15 minutes with our liturgical design consultant. I'd like to do a little bit of introductions here at the beginning. I'm Pastor Mike Wilker, senior pastor here, and I think I've met almost all of you, so it's great to see you here. We also have some people joining us on Zoom, and we're recording this also, so people that are not here tonight will be able to see this first um, about an hour and be able to see what the building design report has been and the first part of our sanctuary report, too. Um, for uh, some introductions, with us tonight is Lee Anderson, who is from Cooney Architects. He's going to be here in the room with us. And then um, his colleague and supervisor is John Wollenkamp, um, who is our lead architect for the um, whole project. And John is on uh, Zoom, and uh, perhaps at times will be on the screen too. And then um, Gail Francioni is our liturgical design consultant, and she is an independent contractor, uh, does a liturgical design consulting for churches all across Iowa and Illinois and into Wisconsin too, and has done uh, Lutheran, Roman Catholic, and a variety of other denominations as well. So it's good to have you here in person, Gail. On our building design team are um, the following people, and if you're here, how about if you would stand up so that we can see you not all of every team is here, but a good chunk of them are. So on the building design team are Jen Solland, Michelle Whitefield. My, oh, that's Pastor. <laughs> Scott Milburn, Joel Sook, Vicki Yeager, uh, John Knoll, and Dale Goodman. So those are building design team folks. But, And then the folks working specifically on our sanctuary design are Mark Mugley, Mark, yeah, there you are, uh, Jennifer Larson, Will Bungy, Carrie Nimrod, uh, Mark Potvin, Brenda Carlson, 
and Kate Elliott. All right, so what I'd like to do is just to remind us of some of the um, undergirding principles that we have as a congregation and as we've been working on this building project for the last two, almost three years now. And so first, let's um, take out, you got our logo on the front cover of these sheets, and we have our welcome statement. And so let's say this as a litany for one another. And I'll read the light type, and I invite you to read the dark print. Whatever your country of origin or ancestry, your race or ethnic heritage, and whether you are religious or not, Christian or not, or Lutheran or not, whether you are male, female, or transgender, young or old, straight, gay, lesbian, or bisexual, you are welcome here. Whether you are single or partnered, married, widowed, or divorced, you are welcome here. Whether you are wealthy or poor, own a home or rent, live at home or are homeless, you are welcome here. Whatever your political views, whether to the right, to the left, or to the center, you are welcome here. Whatever your strengths or weaknesses, gifts or challenges, they will be honored for you are welcome here. First Lutheran Church is committed to being a loving and welcoming community centered in the good news of Jesus Christ, in faithfulness to the Christian gospel, in reflection of our Lutheran emphasis on grace, and in celebration of our shared baptismal journey, we promise to enter into ministry with all who seek God here. We invite you to join us for worship and take up your place with us in ministry for you are welcome at First Lutheran Church. Now turn to the back side and we're going to sing this hymn, What is This Place? And it's a, the tune is a Dutch tune, written to two, I think is what it's called. So let's sing that. I think Susan Potman is going to get us started. And Mark, perhaps, too. What is this place where we are meeting? Building, 
remind ourselves that um, all of these designs come out of our mission as a congregation. As you might recall, one of the things that attracted me to be your senior pastor way back last fall was that I saw this building project unfolding and that you were making a connection between your ministry and mission of a, as a congregation and the bricks and mortar of this building. So that's what we wanted to do is remind us of that connection once again. The mission of First Lutheran Church is rooted in the gospel of God's grace, is a welcoming community of worship, witness, spiritual growth, and ecumenical service to God and God's people. And our vision is that we will seek ways to live our value of being welcoming by addressing barriers to welcome, both physical and spiritual. We will provide fertile ground to cultivate and develop deeper relationships in our faith community so individuals feel more connected with God, their faith, and each other. We will seek ways to actively share our faith in Jesus Christ at home, in the congregation, and in our community. We will communicate a vision that will inspire and motivate the congregation to action. And then in worship, specifically, we want to craft faithful and diverse opportunities for hearing God's word, sharing in the sacraments, and joining in prayer and praise. First Lutheran Church, grounded in the gathering word meal sending pattern of the Lutheran liturgy, values worship as a sacred space for people of faith and seekers alike to encounter God and to receive God's grace. In witness, we proclaim the good news of God in Christ through words and deeds that make visible God's love, faithfulness, grace, and hospitality. First Lutheran Church commits itself to the radical welcome of Christ inviting all to know God and to become a part of our community. In terms of growing, we equip God's faithful people for ministry by nurturing growth in faith and discipleship. First Lutheran Church commits to the spiritual growth of its members and values the ongoing development of faith across all ages. Opportunities for education and reflection encourage members toward a seamless integration of faith and daily life. And in serving, Jesus is our model for a whole life service. We follow his example by serving others and working for justice and peace. First Lutheran Church sustains significant partnerships with community and global organizations that seek to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, provide basic needs for the vulnerable, and advocate for those whose voices are not being heard. Those um, values and that vision and mission inspires and guides everything that we do here in this building, but also in all of the ways that we serve throughout this community and world. And now I'll turn to the next page and see how our mission and values are expressed through the building campaign process that we've been going through. When we started the For Generations to Come 2021 capital campaign, we said that from one generation to another, First Lutheran Church remains faithful to its mission to be a place of worship, growth in faith, and spirit-led service for the sake of bearing witness to the saving work of Jesus Christ. And so we said as a congregation, to accomplish this mission into the future, we need a space for worship that is accessible and hospitable to all. We need a building that reflects our witness and welcome to God's unconditional love, offers easy access to all parts of our building, creates a wide variety of spaces for congregational and community gatherings, provides updated and flexible spaces for spiritual growth and faith formation opportunities for all ages and experience levels, and demonstrates our ongoing commitment to service through dedicated social ministry space. And then from the building on mission of works, workshops that you all did in uh, February of 2021, you also had these additional um, phrases that led by God's spirit, we will build for welcome and hospitality, addressing both physical and spiritual barriers to belonging. We will build for Lutheran worship and witness renewing and reforming for continued excellence in liturgy, preaching, and music. 
We will build for youth and family ministry and for spiritual growth at all ages and life stages. We will build for service and outreach. The building proposal includes dedicated, flexible, and secure space for social services ministry. We will build for the community. We will build for the congregation's work and workers. And we will build with praise and thanksgiving for God's abundant blessings. We will build mindful of the faith, community, witness, and service nurtured at First Lutheran. So as you uh, listen to the architects um, go through their presentation, and as you uh, work together at your tables on the sanctuary design, consider how we're expressing these values that we've committed to over these last three to five years um, in the bricks and mortar designs that we have. This will be probably the best way to evaluate a few years from now if we've met our goals, is to see if we're um, doing that as we create these plans together tonight and into the future. So now I'm going to um, pass this mic over to Lee Anderson and John Wollenkamp, our architects. Yeah. Hi, so again, my name is Lee Anderson. I'm with Community Architects. Um, on the computer through Zoom, we have John Wallenkamp. Put it up. Sorry, there we go. I should know this. I'm a band and I am a singer. So I'm a <laughs> Mine's usually stationary. <laughs> So on the on the Zoom is my boss John Wallenkamp. He's the principal for the firm. Um, he's the lead architect on the project. So what we're going to do today is we're going to walk through the floor plan, show you some visual imagery of what we've come up with so far, um, and then open it up for some minor questions. So what you're looking at on this first slide is the main level floor plan. That's the floor plan which is accessible from the parking lot, and that's the parking lot you're seeing, the existing lot here. So one of our big goals for this project was to obviously make this building and this entry accessible and accessible to the sanctuary from all levels. So what we've done is we've actually created a new entry on the southwest side of the building, and that entry is accessible from that parking lot, like I said, by a slope walk and a ramp, which brings you into the large new gathering space, which you can see is this large blue space that is on the same level as the sanctuary space. So that, that being said, that goal was to tie all those spaces together for more fluid design and more welcoming entrance. Um, also on this main level, we have some of the remodeled office spaces in green. Um, you can see that section, that core here, with the new reception area by the new vestibule office entrance. Can you flip to the lower level, the basement level? Sure. So in the basement level here, we have an open program room space. Um, program is a flexible space for many uses, um, which is accessible through elevator, which is accessed off that main floor plan level. Um, kind of a caveat to add about this is the basement is still somewhat in flux as we've done some research on the soils in the area. So the basement is, is kind of up in the air based on some of what we're dealing with on site. But the intent is for this basement space to be used as a program area, overflow space, and some restrooms. We go back to the middle. So seeing that basement level, that ties in with that elevator there is what you're seeing. Go to the upper level. So moving on to the upper level. So what we're showing for the upper level, you can see the gathering height is a two height space. So the gathering level, the second level actually has some of the, the, kindergarten, the kindergarten room, the kids room, pre-K, some room spaces, some additional storage. Um, we're remodeling some restrooms, some classrooms. Um, those are some of the main bulk of the program rooms that will be used by smaller groups. And again, the new elevator is, is key to us tying the whole building and making all floors accessible to anyone that will want to use those spaces. Um, we are also utilizing the space above the entrance space, the entrance is a two height space. We're utilizing that for some of our mechanical room and some of our mechanical space to centralize that and make that most efficient. And that, that does tie me into talking about some of what we've been doing with the mechanical systems. Uh, one of our goals was to implement geothermal design 
for the new addition. Um, we're, we're looking to target as many of the green building objectives as we can. Um, we're still studying those elements and we're still in the works, but that's the goal of the project. Next slide. So this is the attic level. Um, most of this level is remaining the same. We're just remodeling some of the spaces that are there now. The high school, middle school room, another small group room, and again, bringing that elevator up to that space to tie that all together to make that whole building accessible. Um, what you're seeing here is some solar panel locations. That's another green initiative we look at targeting is putting solar panels in addition to what you already have um, on some of the new low sloped roofs. And that will be some of these white sections here on the roof. I think you're rendering up. Sure. This one? Yeah. Or the overall? Oh, that's good. That's good. So this is the main level of the gathering space. The space that you see in the large, the large blue space here with the tables. That's that double height space you're seeing where you're utilizing some exposed trusses. Um, and what you can't see in this view is the windows on that south facade. Our goal is to bring as much natural light into that space as possible. Um, use a lot of light finishes and really lighten up and brighten up that space. Another key aspect of the gathering space which we've been studying is tying the gathering space with the sanctuary and reusing those existing stained glass windows. So the way the levels work out, that new main floor obviously flushes out and levels off with the new sanctuary. So you know that the, the existing stained glass windows are about three, four feet off the ground. Our intent is to put a door in that opening and you can see that door there. Tying those two spaces together, utilizing, utilizing as much glass in the door as we possibly can to create that visual connection between the two spaces. And what we're doing at the ceiling level for those windows is we're gonna vault the ceilings at those windows. So that full existing window that you have now on the exterior is exposed on the interior that you're gathering space. Um, in addition to those design elements, we're looking to keep the brick columns as they are now to be able to bring some of those existing materials you have on your building onto the inside of the building and basically bring that feel of the sanctuary into this space and tie those two spaces together. So you're going to go here. Yeah. Oh, this is a no, you're good, you're good. So this is a quick image of the reception and the lobby entrance and the office space. This shows a new reception desk, um, a new secure entrance. And what I mean by secure entrance is someone walks in this vestibule and the receptionist has the option to see them there and buzz them into that second set of doors. So that does add a level of security for, for that office area and for the building in general. You can go to the exterior one now. So as you've seen, this is the exterior, this is the south facade with the new entry. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is that sloped walk that I mentioned up to the new doors, which are at the sanctuary height. Um, that's, that, that's that ADA accessible sloped walk that ties from the parking lot to the new doors, and which brings you up to the height to make that whole first floor accessible. Those are some of the windows I was mentioning on the south facade that tie into the gathering space to bring that natural light in. Um, some other elements on the south facade that we've done is we've, we've taken elements from the existing sanctuary design and simplified them to help tie into that design, but not take away from the existing sanctuary. Like some of the gabled roof profiles and some of the window profiles, um, some of the brick columns and that detailing. And, and so our, our goal was to obviously have a good match to the existing sanctuary, but like I said, not take away from it and tie it in and bring the sanctuary with the new addition to the existing office piece and tie the whole building to one functional cohesive piece. So I think at that point I'll open it up so if anyone's got any questions before I pass it off to Gail, oh, I got hands going. <laughs> so I don't know names, but yeah. Um, small elevator. Is Correct. it still on the design? Is that going to stay? Correct. The intent is for that elevator to stay. Yep. If you park on the streets beside the church, Correct. where do you walk over to enter? There's actually an entrance from the far west side and from the south side. So you have to walk around into the parking lot? You'd have to walk around up this sidewalk up to this walk here. And that's a great point. And that's something that we can look into. I guess we'll pull to the back. I wasn't uh, clear about your uh, the doors. You mentioned an office that you can see the entryway, but on the plan, I, I see. Oh, I, 
yeah, there's there's a small reception window that whoever works there will be able to see through and and be able to someone. Gotcha. We'll go Minnesota. Can you go to the first floor plan and show the people what the view and what's in existence? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Could the questions be repeated, please? So the question was if we could go back to the main floor plan and show what's existing, what's first new in the layout plan. So I, I can't reach all the way to the top, but you can see the existing outline is, is this right here, this outline. Um, that's where that fireside room is. So that's your existing outline shape. And this is the exterior south wall. And there's, an, there's a south entrance right in this space right here. So really what we're filling in what's new is the gathering space, this nursery room, the kitchen storage in this hallway space and bathroom area. That that would be the new fill in addition piece. Was there did that did that help clarify? Yeah, I, I knew what it was, but I just told oh, you. Oh, okay. Okay. Exactly what you're gotcha. About. Gotcha. What about the steeple? This the existing steeple? Yes. Oh, nothing to be in touch with that. Um, you said that the existing elevator will stay correct but my understanding is that it's not code so yeah. when, you, when you when you revise a plan don't you have to change the elevator so that it can fit a gurney or something correct the, the elevator that we put in new will be an accessible elevator oh, I see. so you can keep the old one yes as it is. okay correct yeah and that the one we have now will be obviously maintenance and fixed and repaired um it's just a second Second access point of accessibility we don't feel is worth getting rid of. We'll go blue again on the right side. Sorry, we're going for our blue. A, a picture of the gathering space. Yeah. Uh, is there any way where the doors, where you put the stained glass windows in, the yep. doors are below those stained glass windows? Is there any way to structurally make that all window rather than all so yep. that you can see? So that if you're in the gathering space, you want to look into the worship area, you don't have all the walls that are blocking. I would say without compromising the structure of the existing sanctuary, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the question was if there was a way to make that whole wall, the west wall of the sanctuary class. Um, and, and that's where a lot of those buried columns are on that wall. So I would say without, you know, Potentially compromising the structure, I would say no, and that's why we're targeting those openings that exist now. You know, just especially to stay within our our means and methods of being able to do something that's possible. Put that way. So, so the so the beams that are supporting the roof are going to be in the white spaces on that picture. Correct. Yeah. Yep. They're they're actually exposed in the room. Between those beams. Yeah. Could you just to the door height, not all the way up, and you put glass in there? And that, that would be something we have to look into. I don't think I could give you a, a good yes or no answer today. I was wondering about the dimensions of the two elevators. Typically, I think it would be around eight by ten. Um, would be the interior car. Um, that's. I don't know that we have the size fully dialed in yet. We know that that's about in space for an elevator, but eight by 10 is roughly the size of a standard elevator. But it obviously has to be sized to what we're going to use it for, and, and that study hasn't quite been done yet. I have two questions. One is, and I don't know if you can answer this or if the committee can answer this, has anyone thought about where the church library will be? That's the first question. And the second question is, in the current women's restroom, there's a place for breastfeeding mothers to use. In these little bathrooms, there's no possibility for that. There's no chair, there's no, and you know, I don't know if you have to go into the nursery, which would be kind of weird. I, I mean, it might be something that we need to think about. Yeah, and that's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, Pastor. So the last question was, was was there a space for a mother's room potentially um, for a mother breastfeeding or needing a use like that? And the smaller restrooms don't seem to um, be adequate for that sort of use. Um, and I, that's a great point. We'll look at that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Is there a family restroom for fathers to take children? I think the intent was that they were all single use family restrooms. We do have programmed in one of the child seats and baby changing station at each. Um, so the intent was that they would all be family restrooms that style. Like I said, each room would have the baby change, and each room would have the child seat with the straps or the other. Now, considering that millions of birds are killed every year in the United States striking windows, do you have any uh, effort and plans to put in bird friendly glass in the outside windows? Um, I don't know that we've done that study. And that's a great point. But then, repeat again. Yeah, the question was, was um, thinking about how birds wrap with the windows and making sure that we're not creating a, a hostile environment for that. And, and that's also something that we'll look into. Here to okay. yeah. Yeah. Right. Those, are, those are sort of details we work out in some of the construction documents, but at the, the programming phase and layout phase, we just oh, this is put in that manual. But so that's a fantastic point. Okay. Will this stru the structure that's being added impact the number of car parking spaces in our parking lot? No. No, the existing parking will remain. Repeat the question. Oh, I'm sorry. Parking lot. The parking lot. Yeah. The, the last question was, I, I guess I'm ready to answer it. I, you know. <laughs> the last question was the parking lot. Will that remain as is or will that be affected? And the answer is no, the parking will remain exactly the way it is now. So I think we'll maybe do a couple more and then I don't want to, then we'll have Gail take over and so a couple more. We'll go green. So the gray wall or hallway that's added to the front. It appears to be a dead end hallway. Is there an entrance? Yeah, and, and I apologize. That's just a that's a that's a planned printing error. There, that is an open space. Um, some of the reasons for that that wall being there is we're developing the space above it right now for the mechanical room for the engineers. So I'm I'm thinking that wall maybe got there on accident. And the question was. Was that was that entry space in this hallway? Is that in hallway? The answer is no. That that's open up to the gathering space. So there's no there are no entrances along. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. The question was there was no other entries besides for the southwest corner. And the existing church, and, and that's correct. The intent is to keep all the openings and doors along the north side. Uh, yeah. the, the vestibule, this the office entry up top there, and does then that, the southwest corner would be the new main entrance point. Does that meet with fire code? Yeah. No. That the <laughs> entrance is still there, though. Correct. There. Correct. Yeah. The, we, this entrance. Yeah. All right. I think. Lower level. Yes. Repeat the questions, please. Yep. So the questions were about the exits, which exits we're going to keep, which ones are new, and how that ties into fire code. And that is a study we do. Um, and that's, that's obviously a code analysis piece that we get into. We haven't got to it yet, but but the yes, everything that we do door wise and entrance wise um, will be you know code compliant. And the intent is for the new main entrance to be at the southwest corner. Um, along the east side and the north side, all those entrances and exits will remain. Those stair exits, those emergency exits, those stairways, those would all remain as is. The only modification piece would be at that southwest corner and at the new office piece, but that new office entry is um, also another access point we're adding. <coughs> Hopefully that answer. But the southeast lower level entrance will still be there. Correct, correct, correct. So you're saying if we come in this door, you still go up those stairs to go to the welcome center? Correct. Now, if you went in that door, yes. And the question was, if you go on the east door, do you still have to come up through the stairs to go up to the new greeting space? And that, that is correct, yes. Sure. And this door will still be there, too, on this side? No. That door will not be there anymore. The west, the west sanctuary door on grade that will not be there anymore. That's covered up, and that's obviously we're filling space for the new addition. So I think we'll do one more in the pink, and then I'm going to hand it over to Gail. Uh, let her present. Uh, I think she shows we've got the stained glass windows. Yes. Yeah. Uh, looking at the. Uh, 
But um, the question was, where were the doors in the um, stained glass piece of wall? Are you asking in this wall here, where are the doors? Yes. The square there you're seeing is the door. The door is a normal seven foot tall door, um, but that opening would be door, would be a glass door. So the opening itself would, would swing out into the new gathering space. Um, and like I said, it would be a full glass door. Well, thank you, everyone. I, I appreciate the comments and obviously everything we talked about today, we'll look into it. I, I appreciate all the feedback. I'm going to hand it over to Gail. Thank you. I tend to have a soft voice, so if you don't hear me, make noises and, and jump up and down and tell everybody that you don't hear me. This is amazing. I'm so glad to see everybody. Um, am I in the view or do I have to stand way over here to be seen? Uh, you're in view. But if I'm over there, I'm not in view, right? I, you were in view. I was in view over here? Yeah. Over here? You're good right there. I'm still good? Yep. That's well, <laughs> not, not there. There. There, you're good. Okay. <laughs> my answer over there. That's all right. Hi, everybody. Uh, yes, my name is Neil Branzoni, and I uh, have been doing with Central Consulting for about 20 years or so. We've been working with various There's a new person talking. Oh, all right. Should we go? Okay. The Zoom call. Oh, Zoom. sorry. Okay, yeah. hi. Um, I get, I don't understand. Um, so my, uh, I love to do this. I am so happy to be here. I can't hardly stand it. Um, but let me ask you, I want to learn a little bit about who you are. Members of First Lutheran Church, Decorah, Iowa. How many of you are members for less than five years? So some very newbies. How about less than 10 years? How about less than 20 years? Everybody else is more than 20 years? Okay. <laughs> How many of you are related somehow to Luther College? That means everybody else is not related to Luther College. That includes me. Um, okay. How many of you are not Norwegian? <laughs> okay. All right. There's a good representation there. Me too. I'm Italian. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to them sometime later. Um, okay, so tonight, what I'm hoping that we can do is um, I want to play a little bit. I want to do what's called a charrette. A charrette is um, actually it's an architectural term, and it's basically an exercise that architectural students do. They're given a certain design problem. Okay, you have this much time to solve this design problem. <laughs> And then you have to turn it into the teacher. And, and it's like boom, boom, boom. Now we are not under time pressure. But I basically want you to work at your tables on a pro some proposals on how we can make this sanctuary the space that we need. I'm not expecting anyone to solve all the problems tonight. Okay? So you may have some of it, but lots of questions. Because you know what, so do we, the Sanctuary Design Team has been working for the last month or so. We've been, we've been studying because what we have not been necessarily talking furniture. What we're doing is learning about worship. What happens here on Sunday, Saturday night and Sunday morning? What do you actually do when you worship on Sunday? What are the, I mean, theologically, what do you do? Physically, what do you do? What happens at liturgy? What happens when you worship? And what we want to do, you have been in transition for a long time. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, you want to get settled. But throughout that transition, you've also had been forced to experience different kinds of shapes and configurations and furniture and pastors and everything. It's been a lot of transition. And so now we are at a point where let's see if we can take all of that stuff that we've experienced 
and settle ourselves to, well, what do we actually do? How does it actually work for us? Because every congregation is different. Some people do, for example, baptism a certain way. Other congregations may do it a completely different way. Other congregations may do communion like this, and other congregations may do communion like this, and I don't know how you do it because you do it in many ways. So part of what we've been talking, you know, and that's okay because you've been learning all kinds of things. I think it's fabulous because you're learning about worship and what, what's authentic to us. And when you understand, when you, you know, anybody who is a Christian and understands how their worship happens in our physical space, you are the perfect opportunity to let's make our physical space help us worship the way we want to worship. You know, right now, worshiping in a building that has seven different levels is not very helpful, right? And you have a chance right now to, as well as possible, eliminate that need for all those levels. The elevators are going to be. But in our sanctuary, that's a different place. It's not just a pedestrian place. That's where we worship. <laughs> that's in a very important place. So I want, so, so our group has been studying the four basic places where we where we do activity in worship. One is the place of the people, where you move around, where we sit, and the people do. Where we, how we arrange ourselves, how we move in through that space. What works best for us? And I've been showing lots of examples, and we've been talking about it. the place of the people, very important. The place of the word, also very important. You have had different experiences of how that, how the word has been proclaimed. How do you want it to be proclaimed? You know, what makes sense now? The place of the bath, the baptismal font. Where should it be located in this church? How, what do you think about baptism? I've seen baptismal fonts the size of punch bowls. I've seen baptismal fonts the size of a medium-sized wading pool. Lots of different options out there. And finally, the place of the meal. You know, how do you want to do communion? How do we structure it? Because there's many different parts to that. So we've been studying that. We haven't been studying the architecture. But what do we do? And then the implications of that. Okay. Are you totally lost? Are you with me so far? Okay. Okay. On the table over there, at least they have to help. I mean, you can help me. The, those pages that are set, yeah, they're two and two and two and two. Each table should get one pair. And let's hope it is enough. Because now set the other table, set the other drawings aside. Because what we're going to do is we're going to walk through those doors that have been built into the stained glass windows, and we're going to walk into the sanctuary space. And I have put together several scenarios for us to work on the charrette. So you'll have to share. You may eventually be pulling them apart, but but first, we'll make sure all the pages are there, and everybody's got at least a couple per table. I can also tell you this, you're all grown up, you know that if you need more coffee or you want another cookie, go get it. Okay, does everybody have at least a couple at your table? Because if this table gets split up again and just, you know, give yourself more room, because you'll need more. Are there any extras? No. They should all be uh, passed out. Don't look. Don't look. Put it on the first page. Don't do, do not open this book. Do not turn this page. All right. When you all have, you all have a, 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 a copy at your desk, you're all on page one. Tell me what is on page one. I don't have the actual pages. What's the first one? 
It says in the upper left hand corner, church outline. Okay, this is the outline of your sanctuary from the bird's eye view, right? From the top of the roof, looking down. You should be able to look at it and see it's completely empty. There are walls, there are windows, there are doorways, there are steps into the chancel. You got it? Anybody confused? That makes sure everybody understands what because that's going to be our base. That's the outline of the church. Okay, if you flip to the other side of that, tell me what it says. It should be look for the one called original design. Hmm? Okay. Original design? No. There's one that should be the original design. The way the church was where it was built. Who does not have an original design? Oh. All right. We'll need to share a little different with that. Well, okay. You should have five total. There should be five drawings total. The original design, the current design, something called antiphonal design, and then something completely different, as well as the blank page. Uh, okay, let me ask, let me, let me, let me say it again, let me do it again, but uh, don't talk, so you can all hear what I'm saying. There should be five designs total, there should be a blank, there should be one that says, like, original design, there should be one that says, current design with modifications, there should be one that says, antiphonal design, and there should be one that says, completely different. Okay, everybody's got at least what do you guys say? Okay, so so you need a couple of and is that on every Hacker and Hasdale Hacker doesn't, but most people have it, and we're gonna help those who don't. Okay, so you guys okay. Let me let me walk through it because I, I think those two are the, the traditional the traditional design is the easiest one. And you all remember how the church used to look. There was a main aisle, and there were ranks of pews on one rank, two ranks of pews, all facing the front. There was okay. If you don't have this one, don't panic. You know it's okay because this is the one you all know in your head anyway. Long aisle, two banks of pews, the chancel, the communion rail, the altar in the back, the high pulpit. The entryway, right? You all know what that church looked like. I had just made an I just made a drawing of it. Do you have the one that says um, current design with modifications? Okay, yeah. everybody should have that one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That one has current design with modifications. The current design where the seating is all pews, but it's in a kind of a different kind of a configuration, right? Like a C, like a sideways C shape or a U shape. Maybe that's better way to describe it. Um, there is a pulpit or a lectern that you use in the center of that area. The baptismal font is in the center of that area. From the music into the place where it's one of those sides of the U, right? Again, I'm just reminding you what's already up there. There are a couple of modifications that I drew in there. And again, all of these are starting points for your imagination. None of these ideas are set in stone. Repeat after me. None of these ideas are set in stone. Good. Don't start the rumor. Hey, they already decided they're going to do it this way. No. None of these ideas are set in stone. All right. The modifications I added to this is that some of those pews could be chairs. Not metal forward chairs, but chairs that actually look like pews. They're designed, there are a lot of chairs built, and you've maybe been in churches where pews and chairs allows for more flexibility. Um, also, I remember, 
Um, I included a convenient table. Rather than the table pie altar at the end of the sanctuary, you notice there's a table in the center of that. Because again, something that I mean, something you need to consider is how do we want to do communion? When the church was built, how often was communion celebrated? Once a month. I don't know. The people on Zoom, I'm sorry you can't see these, but they will be available to you in the office. I think we're going to have those copies available. And I'm describing it well enough, I hope. So there was an altar table in the center of this current design with modifications. The other thing, if you notice, the main entrance to the church, the normal right now, the main entrance is on the south side. There's some black lines on there. Because the sanctuary design team was, in fact, talking about the possibility. You know how you walk up how many stairs, and then there's this big stoop and you walk in the front door, and then you got to walk up a few more stairs to get into the church? Okay. The thought occurred to somebody what would happen if we took that huge block of cement and got rid of it? It would fall out the door, right? We don't have that. However, what if you took the doorway, and you might keep it looking like a doorway, but not a usable door. So in other words, it is the original doorway, so when people see the church, they realize that's the way the front door used to be, because we know there's an addition. But instead of it being a door, in front of it, you put garden, pathway, balcony, sitting place, something else. So clearly, people are not going to try to get in the door. And obviously, from the other side, you want to get off. Now, for what Lee was saying regarding code and exits and all that, we have to work that out. But again, this is, we're dreaming tonight. But what would be the possibilities for that space if we didn't use it? Because the question I asked the committee was, well, we know there's a door over here. What about a stranger, a new person coming to church? Well, they're going to walk up the stairs. Do you want them to walk up the stairs? So something to think about that. So those are a couple of modifications on plan two. Plan three says antiphonal seating. Antiphonal seating simply means the rows of seating are facing each other. Facing each other so that there is a wide, generous aisle in the middle where you would place the altar table, you would place your physical font, you would place the pulpit, you would place the wedding couple. You would place the, the, the casket. You know, all the activity would happen in the center, and everyone would be able to see not only themselves, but be closer to the liturgical action. Okay. Um, also added to this one, again, chairs are pews. Also added to this one is the table in the center. You see those two lines next to the table on either side? That would be a small, simple altar rail, communion rail. I don't know if you use your communion rail. I don't know if you want to continue to use it, if you want to make it available. But that could be a way of making it available. It could also be temporary. So I, I set it in there. Also on that antiphonal CD, if you notice, the um, music has been placed in the chancel on the opposite side from the organ. This music is very important in this congregation. And so to offer more seating, maybe you want to put them over here. I don't know. Um, okay, the last design, and now for something completely different. It's not really that different, but the pulpit is placed below the border. And so preaching would happen kind of in the opposite direction of what you would typically expect. Also, you see where the font has been placed? The font has been placed at one of the doorways. A space has been cut out for the font. And the reason for that is, again, is how do you want to think about baptism? Is baptism, well, I think everybody would agree that baptism is our way of entering the church, right? We enter the church through baptism. We enter the church through the front door. So many churches will put if you don't, you know, you have to go through baptism to become a Christian to get to the altar and the pulpit and the people. And so some places have put a font at the entryway. So again, I'm teasing you with ideas. Okay, 
Any questions about what you're seeing so far? Any questions, any confusions, any? If you're not confused, I don't know. I think everybody should be a little confused right now. But yes. It's, it's, uh, it's up to you. It could be, you know, I mean, one configuration could be all views. One is, oh, I'm sorry, the question was, the question was in the last design of completely different, is it all chairs? And I'm saying that that's an option. It could be all chairs. It could be all two. It could be combination. A lot of people will, oh, don't, don't be planning yet. Don't be planning yet. I'll give you plenty of time to do that, but don't be planning yet. Okay. Let me talk a few more minutes. Just a few. Um, Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, all right. So um, you get to decide. Now, these, uh, I just want to make sure that you're clear on what's, what you're looking at. Because the next step is now to start your own imagination, start your own creative juices flowing. I'm offering you suggestions. I'm throwing out what other churches have done. And then you can look at this and say, that doesn't work. That's very interesting. I don't know how that one would work. Maybe it would, but I have a question about it. So let's put it in and ask the question. Now, you get to decide. You're not, you're not making the design of the church, okay? You're putting together feedback for the sanctuary design team and for the architects to get some basic ideas of what seems to be useful. And again, it's not, I don't like that. That is not the basis by which we make judgments. Today we're making judgments based on what Pastor was showing at the very beginning. Mission statement, the values we hold important in our worship and as a part of our community. So I don't like this, but boy, it would really help our hospitality. I don't like this, but it sure offers a lot of flexibility. So that I don't like doesn't count. It, we're not talking about I don't like, we're talking about how it meets our values. If you understand what I'm saying, nod your head. You understand what I'm talking about. It's not like personal preference. We want to get a, a, a basis for agreement or disagreement on certain things. Yes. That that would be a challenge. I mean, a, a challenge to consider. When I was playing around myself, yeah. well, the question was, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. The question is, how do these configurations, how do you deal with the high altar and the painting and all of what's against that back wall? And the, when I was thinking about it, my consideration was the painting can remain if the altar, the high altar is not being used, it could be removed because it's not being used, which is also true of the pulpit, the high pulpit. If it's not being used, what is it there for? Uh, is there something else it could be used for? Should it just be set aside like, like the old uh, eight-track tapes that we no longer use? You know, it was good technology at the time. Pulpit, high pulpit, good technology at the time. Your people didn't need a microphone. They didn't have a microphone. Here's the high pulpit. Don't need it now. We still. That's the question. Mark, did you have a question? Yeah. Okay. Any other comments in the one? I will be wandering around as with some of the sanctuary team uh, to help you with this. Because you're now, remember the first page is a blank page? Yeah. Now you get to play. <laughs> so I want you to talk and think about the components that you see that are pleasing, that are useful, that may be helpful. Wait, wait, wait. Give me another minute. Give me 60 more seconds. Give me 60 more seconds. No, no, Give me 60 more seconds. I don't, I don't, I'm excited. I agree. Um, so I'm going to give you half an hour to do this. You have plenty of time to come up with a scheme that you think could work. Come up with a partial scheme and your questions. Come up with nothing and all kinds of questions. I mean, this is, look at, it's wide open. There's no, there's no grading in this. If you can't come up with anything, we want to know why. If you came up with something, we want to know why. And then at the end, at, at a half an hour, I want to hear from everybody. Each, each table is going to make a little report. 
to the whole room so that we can hear from each other the, the ideas we came up with. Okay. All right. It's seven oh four. So at seven, I, I will, I'm going to give you half an hour, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. So now you can talk. Good. And this, mm -hmm. can I say goodbye? To you? Yeah, I understand. Sorry. These some little drawings will be available in the office. Yeah, maybe you already did that. Like we did, but I'll remind you. Okay, great. Uh, well, there are and then Adrian also said you could email maybe and they can send out the description. So yep. email is uh, office at office did say should we make our own little chat group? Um, yeah, they have Do you know if they want to stay on, we can't facilitate it. Is okay. there an issue? So we thought you would like to participate on the Zoom. That's fine. Yeah. 